Okay, let's let that area be for a little bit. Um, I'm going to actually start some of my pink tint in the main part of the design. So let's zoom out so you can see a little bit more what I've got here. Okay, I'm going to use my paint kind of wet on wet. So I'm probably going to flip between um, my flesh tone and my quinacridone violet. And I want to start, let's start with this petal over here on the left. I'm just going to add the extender into the paint itself and get that nice and loose and make sure that if you've cleaned your brush that you re-dip the blender also into in fact you can see that that was dirty so good thing I checked it you always want that to be clean okay wipe it on the towel alright so this is pretty loose it's about the consistency of liner brush work but I've thinned it with extender instead of water then the next thing I want you to think about is the direction you're pulling your strokes. If you had the very center of your flower and you think about like the hands of a clock, those are the directions that you're going to make that go. You're going to pull from the center out and around just like you would uh, the hands of a clock. So what I mean by that, in fact, let's just do this so that you see the direction because I can there. So that's about the direction that they go. Okay, now I want to get that softened up here. Okay, I don't really want harsh, harsh lines. Okay, I want to work in a little bit smaller area at a time and I want to soften where I've stopped with that. Now I'm going to be doing a lot of wiping off on my paper towel with my blender brush. Now I am going to turn this so that I'm pulling towards me. So let's get this going the right direction here. All right, soften away those tips. If you pull that color out too much, you can actually go back and add some of your flesh tone that has been mixed with extender to soften it. So I wouldn't wait for it to dry. I would go ahead and do everything while it's wet. I'm gonna soften or loosen up that flesh tone. Okay, and let's get some of that going on the outside edge of that pink. And then while those two are wet, Let's kind of soften or melt them together. Kind of bring that down in a little bit. Okay, I want this to be a strong color in the middle here. Try not to lose your nice white that you've got. In fact, let's get a little bit more of the flesh tone separating that. And I can always come back and touch up the white if I need to. And it's always a little bit hard to see when you've got paint is still wet. So kind of tip it in different directions. I just want to make sure that I've got, I want a lot of color, but I don't want a hard edge on the outside. It's okay to have streaks of this color because I'm also going to add vein lines in there and that's going to make a difference. Cleaning my brush and extender, rubbing it off, just so that I'm not picking up too much dirty color. Now, if your piece has really, really dried out too much, um, you could re-put extender down before you do this step. Just be careful. It's really hard to tell sometimes, depending on your area, 
In fact, I'm working under some bright lights here, so I am just going to scrub a little bit of extender in there, but I'm going to try and stay out of my highlights. I think that'll go on a little easier. Okay, so let's get let's get some more of the pink quinacridon violet and there again it's okay for it to have streaks you're just trying to get rid of the tips you want it nice and bright in the middle and then here is where um, you may even want to use a little bit of a blender or a uh, mop brush. I, I'm, I'm not hardly, I'm hardly even touching the surface with this. Just gently. If you need to pull the color out, you can pull this way. If it's where it's supposed to be, then you go the opposite direction. So kind of use it to your advantage to either uh, push or pull it. Okay, so let's turn this back around again. Okay. Let's get a little bit more. I'm not trying to totally get rid of all of my flesh tone. It's good to see some of that in there. I like to see a variety of color. I can always put more back in if I need to. Okay. Let's soften with the mop brush. Get a little bit more on the top half. Okay, so I'm going to add just a little bit more of the flesh tone where it is close to the white. Break that up just a little bit and I can always come back get more white in there later too. And just kind of softly. Um, it, you'll see that I'm kind of dabbing but I'm not going straight down and stippling like you think of when you're trying to get texture. I'm just I'm kind of pulling and dabbing at the same time, if that makes sense. Okay, so on the other petal here, um, because it did seem to work better than having a little bit more moisture, let's go ahead and let's try not to brush over the white areas though, because I don't want to take a chance of lifting my highlight but I'm going to get it in the middle here where my flesh area is. And there again, remember the direction. Now this time I need to have a little bit more highlight in the center. So I'm going to come up in this top corner and then I'm going to taper. Okay. Soften the tips. Get rid of the extra. And let's see if I can soften with the mop brush. Let that just kind of melt right back in. And don't just paint it solid, solid. You want it to vary. You want it to be a little bit more brush strokey so that it looks more, um, more like vein lines than it does a solid painted color. Okay, and then I'm going to get it a little bit more in the bottom corner. And there again, I'm going to taper it as I come up. Clean that blender brush. Kind of soften those edges. Okay, and then let's try the mop. And you'll notice I'm kind of going different directions with the mop. Okay, and then let's rub that off. Make sure that I'm getting rid of any of the extra paint. A little bit more just to kind of finish connecting it through, but it's going to be a lot skinnier up here. Yeah, 
and soften those edges and then let's mop. I'm going to deepen some of the shadows on the main parts of the petals and I'm going to mix a little bit darker um, color. We had this kind of a purpley gray color that I'd mixed. I want it a little bit darker this time and I'm just going to mix a little extender. So I'll pick up some of the gray. I'm going to tint it with the purple. That's a little too purple. Let's get some more gray in there. Alright, so you want it a little darker than what I did the first time. There again, I just like to brush mix a little bit of extender just to loosen it up. Make sure that you cleaned out your blender brush from our last step and redress it with extender, wipe it on your towel. Okay, let's start with this top petal up here. I'm going to zoom in so that you can see a little bit more now since I've got the color mixed. Okay, this top corner, I want to get that a little darker. I'm not going to go as far as I did the first time. I'll be a little bit shorter and soften that. And I can still do this even if my um, first color is not completely dry. If you're afraid of it, you certainly could use a blow dryer and um, go ahead and uh, get it just a little bit drier before you do it. But I kind of use it to my advantage, letting the colors kind of melt together. So just a gentle, gentle touch, and because I'm not putting more extender on top of that shadow color, I can go back before it's totally dry. Okay, so I've got that top corner that I've reinforced a little bit. I'm going to reinforce, I'm not going to do the top edge, but I am going to come right in the center here where we had that shadow that went across but this time I'm just going to have it go against that petal and soften it. Sharpen that petal up. Now if I were to you know mess into my other petals remember you can take a clean brush and, and wipe out. This stays light down in the bottom here. However, this petal gets the shadow a little bit darker. And then soften that left edge. And I'm going to also get in the center of the shadow on the right petal. And I'm going to pull it in just a little bit. See how I've pulled just a little bit more of a triangle in there. And then soften that. I haven't gone quite as far as I did with the first color. A little bit, a little bit shorter, about half the way. All right, then on the other side also, I had that purple coming in. I want to come in the center area of that. So that I still have the lighter purple going around it. And then soften those edges. You see how that's starting to make that look like it's uh, dipping in a little bit more in that area. Um, there's going to be some real dark areas in the middle parts also, but let's get under that kind of like, a, it's almost like a little nose sticking out there. 
Let's get that pretty much filled in. But I still have one little section there that's going to have to get real dark. So I just need to soften that left edge. All right, um, I'm going to get the bottom petal here. So let's get this corner, and it's going to make a big difference once I get that black background on there. I actually do put the black background on before I totally finish the flower uh, because then it helps me to see uh, what I have to either make lighter or darker afterwards. Okay, I'm also putting some on the opposite area of that same little petal. And I'm not, um, I don't really need to go totally all the way across. Um, I'm keeping it more into the corners. And softening it and still, I still just leave the uh, flesh tone showing on the outside there. Let's go over to the other side. I want to get this corner here. I kind of pull a little tapered edge and then soften. And let's go on the other side here. That one corner, I do want it to get pretty dark because eventually when I put that black in, I want that to kind of start to disappear into my black background. So I'll probably even come back with even more purple on there once I get my black on and can see what I'm working with. Get that blended. But you can see how that's starting to kind of roll the corners a little bit. I've got, um, I'm going to actually make this section just base this in with that darker purple mix also. There again, if you need to switch to a smaller brush at any time, feel free to do that. All right, let's take a look. That's about as much as I'm going to do with that color for now. I can always come back with more. But I do have those areas that I was telling you that need to get darker. I'm going to go ahead and get those in right now before I forget about them. And I can basically kind of use the... Um, I can either use the purple or I could use the black. Now because I'm just filling them in, all I need is water. I don't need to use a uh, blender. And because I've already got the purple out, that's what I'm going to use. I'm just going to loosen that with a little bit of water so that I can fill in. This dioxazine purple is a nice, nice dark color. And in its concentrated form, it really does look like it's black. Okay, so let's zoom in a little bit so you can see those little areas better. Alright, I've got a little section here. So there again, either purple or the black. And get that, just get those base coated in. They don't need to be blended. A little hole here. bit more on the brush. Another little hole over here. Now I may end up um, highlighting this hole just a little bit on the bottom edge so that it um, 
looks like it is melting into a petal. Let's get another little hole right up there. Um, in fact, let's go ahead and do that while I'm thinking about it. So I'm going to clean the brush and I'm going to switch, um, put extender back in it again, wipe it off on the towel, pick up a little bit of the um, that dark purple that we were um, filled in the bottom area here. So it's going to look like that is extending up. So let's get that and I do have an um, extender in the color itself. Let's do about half of it and then soften. Get just a little bit more. In fact, if your purple's wet, you could probably even just use gray because um, the two are going to kind of mix together if your dark purple is still wet. So okay. just get a little hairline of the darker purple on the top of that filled in and just soften. And just kind of outline And then soften that outline. I'm not filling it in like I did the first time with the lighter. I just want a little shadow and that can kind of melt in to the other area here because it's all going back into a dark shadow. So the two can kind of connect. So you have kind of a disappearing edge. Right, and let's also, I know I'm going to want to get a little bit darker purple. I'm going to put just a little bit of purple in this little teeny corner down here. And this is just the dioxazine purple straight. If it gets too bright for you, you could always put just a teeny touch of um, black into it. Okay. And let's go ahead and get the outside corner on this bottom right petal as well. And I'm okay, let's go ahead and get some darker um, shadows in the center petal areas here now. Um, start with the um, Burgundy. I'm going to use burgundy in the traditions to deepen the reds. This is really a pretty color for deepening reds. And sometimes I'll even put a little touch of the uh, dioxazine purple into it too. But I'm going to just start with it as is. I'm going to use the, the round brush and uh, put a little extender into the burgundy color. I'm not going to moisten the petals. Now you certainly could at this stage on some of these areas if you felt um, more comfortable with a corner load of a brush you certainly could do that. Okay and let's deepen under the flip so that that shows up a little better and above the flip here. And that starts to pop that forward just a little more and then once we get our highlights or lighter colors in there that's going to make a big difference as well. Um, I want to get um, a little bit more, let's see, let's get under are over in this area here. Kind of um, the areas that we already did with the quinacridon violet. Just kind of punching them up a little bit. Maybe not pulling it quite as far as you did. I love these colors. Alright, let's get in the bottom corner. Oops. 
soften that. I want to get quite a bit darker in under this petal as well. Just always softening and melting it down in. Okay, I'm going to leave the, just the quinacridone violet up on top here, but I'll probably put a little bit more up in there when I do my highlights. Um, let's maybe a little bit in this corner also. Get that a little bit deeper. And you can always come back and put more in after you do your highlights too. It's, sometimes it's hard to tell until you've got all the elements in there. Okay, since I've got my shadow, I think, pretty much done there, let's go back a step and let's get the little flipped out petal there. So starting with um, quinacridone violet, and I've got just a little bit of extender in there. And I'm going to... Just kind of fill it in. Get up on the tip. And just some kind of a real windy, twisty little tip on there. Now that um, probably would have been easier to do with the little liner. So let me just kind of get rid of some of the extra fat part. But it's good to know that you can do that. So remember, this is just a clean brush. And I'm just kind of picking at that little edge. So let's use the little liner brush. This is a little um, 20 aught script brush. That's probably a little easier. and get some highlight kind of brushed in the center of that flip of this little twisty petal. White mixed in with my quinacridone. So here's my quinacridone. I'm going to go ahead and put a little extender in there and pick up a little bit of white so I can make just a kind of a medium color pink to start with. And I want to get this edge to show up a little bit more. So I'm going to put some pink on there and soften. And take my clean brush, because I kind of went outside the edge a little bit. Take my clean brush and just kind of lift off that extra. Blend that in. So that makes that pop out a little better. I want to get um, a little bit of this on the outside edge in the basically just that center area and let's pull let's pull it in a little ways and then soften rub my brush off so I'm getting rid of the extra color as I'm blending here Okay, and I think I've got enough on the little tails. They should be good. Um, let's pull some of this color now in from the center. So I make sure that you've got extender in the color. And I want to pull some of this. Remember it needs to kind of splay out like the hands of a clock again. And then let's 
soften that down, melt it down into what's already there. It's just kind of fun to play with it. Um, let's get a little bit over on the other side because that would be the same petal. Just the opposite direction. And soften that. I have extender mixed into the white. Now normally if I'm just outlining I would only use water but because I want to blend the edge away I had extender to thin and I want to just kind of soften. I don't want to pull that too far but I just want to kind of blot away that inside edge so that it's fuzzy so it doesn't look quite so outlined. And I will let that dry before I come back to put the yellow in there. But I need to have this white underneath first in order for that yellow to show up a little bit better on the reds. And blend away that inside edge. Just barely catch it with the tips of your brush. Wipe the extra on your towel in between. And just make sure that you kind of soften where you start and stop. Um, I also want to do that, let's do that, I think, over on this side as well. A little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to want to soften that top edge. So let me turn my piece so I can reach it just a little better. Soften that down in so that you can't see it. Now I don't want to just leave that white. I do want to put the yellow in there afterwards. Some flesh tone and extender together and pull some lines coming in that I can melt into there a little bit better and soften soften those tips get too carried away you could always tint it with some of your red again it's really kind of fun because you can keep going back and forth with the different colors you have a lot of options. All right. Um, there is um, like some little spotted areas with the flesh. Just kind of dab those little spots in there. And remember this is the same petal over here, so let's get a little over here. There's less on the brush now. So it's not going to show up quite as much because I'm in a little bit more of a shadowy area. And then in the center area, we're going to stipple the quinacridone violet in there to get those textured. Those, and it's quite bold. So I'll just kind of dab. Now, you get too carried away, you can always come back with some of your Indian yellow and you can, you know, dab a little bit of that back in there too. Kind of break it up a little bit. Kind of transition it down in the bottom here just a little bit. And it is good to keep working while everything is wet. A little more yellow on the tips, I think. Helps them to show up just a little better. Mm -hmm. 